five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yes, this is Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble. It goes from now until midnight tonight. Yes, okay. Hello, welcome to the program. I decided not to wear a cap tonight. Although, maybe I have to wear a cap. I'll tell you why. I, I bought these uh, two lights here. Uh... Uh, and they're the, what lights me now, which is pretty looks pretty good actually. You know, it looks really good. The background is a little darker. I'm a little more defined. Uh, the picture is uh, much clearer, and uh, uh, let me just see here. Yeah, it's much clearer, and uh, uh, because it, it, the less light you have, the more it has to suck out the picture and so on. And it was look, it now looks great. It's a great picture, but. I'm not, I decided not to wear a cap tonight, and all of a sudden I'm noticing that these lights are just really bright. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how you how you don't have them this bright. The one over here is brighter than the one over here. Okay, I'll show you what I mean here. Hold on a second. In case you're in case you're you should be watching this instead of listening to this. But if you're listening to this, I'm sorry if I'm doing something that's uh, you know a little bit. Uh, Let's see here. Where do we go? Oh, there we go. Okay. So uh, let's see here. This light is lighter, see, than this light over here, which is brighter. Okay. So we put them both on, and now we're okay. All right. Or we could turn them all off, and then I would just be, you'd have to it'd be to look like it used to look. Anyway, so that's what I do. Anyway, I have no guest tonight. Uh, I won't have a guest all week, basically, because uh, I, I didn't think I would be here that much this week because of the so-called operation, which never happened. Got a call today from my doctor's office. The woman there profusely apologized for the inconvenience yesterday. I went, inconvenience? I mean, it was a cluster bleep, all right? Words I do not say as much as I used to because I want to be monetized. By the way, I'm up to $5. I made $5 so far. As soon as I get to 10, I'm taking everybody out to dinner, okay? All right. All right. I think that's in two weeks I got $5. So that means that in ten week, two, four weeks, I get $10. And then uh, after a year, I'd have about 120 bucks. Hey. I live in large. Anyway. Um, by the way, if you get a chance, I, I, you know, this is the way we can uh, cheat the system. If you go over and you watch the show uh, after it's played, uh, and uh, you, you, you will then get a commercial at the very beginning, okay? Watch that commercial for about the required five seconds and then go watch the show. Or if you don't want to watch the show, just go somewhere else. But you might do that like three, four, five times a day. And if every one of you did that, I'd have another 35 cents. So, Also, get your friends to subscribe to our channel. We actually have had a lot of subscribers lately. I don't know why. But suddenly in the last, oh, I don't know, two weeks or something like that, we've had something like 50 new subscribers to the channel. Uh, and uh, I don't know how that happened, but apparently we, we must be terribly and increasingly entertaining. I don't understand why. You know, I listen to, to tapes of myself. I, you know, I have, I got, what I did is I bought a whole bunch of old Midnight Blue shows that were on sale so that I could then steal stuff off of them because, after all, uh, I'm on them, and I've never gotten paid for my appearances, and they don't have any... Uh, right to be using my image without my permission, so I'm going to steal stuff without their permission, which we'll show some of here. I found the Arnold Schwarzenegger interview, The Cat House for Dogs, which is a classic, uh, and a couple other things uh, that I can probably show right here. 
Uh, and then I might repurpose them anyway uh, and uh, screw the guy who thinks he owns them because he doesn't own a damn thing. But anyway, I was watching my old stuff and I went, God, you know, back then I wasn't a bad looking guy. I always thought I was kind of an ugly kid and I always thought I was an even more ugly adult. And it's pretty sure that if you're an ugly kid, you're not going to be a good looking adult. Um, and if you're a good looking adult, you know, things can only get worse. Okay. You know. Um, I, I got to tell you, no matter how good looking you think you are right now, someday you're going to look like me. Okay. Just get used to it. I, I didn't want to pass along that bad news to you, but I'm, I'm passing along that bad news to you. So anyway, uh, I was watching these things and I said, eh, not a bad looking guy. You know, I was amazed at, and I had hair and everything. And I, you know, I, 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 I would have had sex with me if I were somebody. You know, I mean, it was a good-looking guy. And I found that I was, I think, incredibly talented. Uh, I was doing some comedic bits and so on on the show. My timing was terrific. Uh, uh, it's just a shame I didn't try to go in another direction. Why? I was so stuck on radio that I just did radio because I really should have really tried to go into television and doing parts on television and things like that. But it's a little too late for those regrets now. Maybe I can play a surly old man or something on TV now, but, you know, what the hell. So anyway, uh, I, I was watching this stuff and, and saying, hey, the, the, I was pretty good. I was pretty good, you know. And boy, do I suck now, you know, because I don't like the way I sound now. I think I do a, just a crappy job of doing this show. So why you still watch, I have no idea. And um, uh, I will continue to... Um, do it for as long as I possibly can. Uh, they didn't take away my masculinity this week, uh, so uh, it'll be next week probably. I got a call from the doctor today. As you know, yesterday I went through this whole thing. Where I went to the hospital, and they took me in, and they gave me the bracelet, and they made me wear the paper costume, and uh, they uh, did all the intake stuff that they had to do and the questions and the did you have anything to eat today and what are your what are these medicines are you still using and deep 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 and I did all of that and uh, they took my temperature and they took my uh, uh, pressure blood pressure and they weighed me on their big scale which I turned the other direction because I didn't want to see how much I weighed on their scale. And uh, then I'm sitting there waiting in the room, and then they say to me, oh, they're not going to be able to operate on you today. What? The operation was canceled? What if this were something that had to be done right now? You know, doctor comes down, says the hospital didn't order up the things he needed for this specific operation, which is a, sper a sperm, a seed implant, okay, radioactive seed implant in my prostate. And it wasn't just me. It was two other people, too, one of which came all the way from Pennsylvania for the, for the, uh, for the uh, uh, operation. So uh, he said, yeah, they didn't, uh, they didn't have my, uh, I need this little thing. It's a little, about this big. He said, and it's where I, I put that on your, uh, your uh, perineum. And then I put in needles and stuff and put the uh, seeds in. He says, I can't do it without that. And they didn't have any in the operating room for me when they were supposed to. Okay? They were supposed to. So, so much for St. Uh, for St. Jude. For, uh, 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 for um, Mount Sinai. You know, uh, I'm through with Mount Sinai. From here on in, I'm going down to... There's what was Sloan Kettering is a good cancer hospital. And then there's one over at Cornell Weill, uh, which I used to think was the name of an old movie actor. Uh, Cornell Weill is, is, is uh, Shecky's going there for just some tests and things like that. He says, it's gorgeous. And I had a friend who died there. And I went up to see her in her hospital room. And uh, she was... She was pretty well on her last leg. This one I inherited the money from. Uh, and um, she uh, died. But before she died, I went up to see her in her hospital room at the Cornell Weill. And the rooms are incredible. I said, what is this? It's like, it's like they put you up in your own apartment. This is better than your apartment. Because I remember her apartment. It wasn't like that. It was gorgeous. 
And Shecky said, all the, pl- all the rooms in that hospital are like that. It's like, uh, you know, and, and David Koch, one of the Koch brothers, was the guy who put up the money for this hospital. <laughs> so I'm going over there next time. I'm going over to the luxury suites, you know. I'm going somewhere where they at least can supply the doctor with the tools he needs to do the operation. Which brought me down to what I thought I might talk about tonight, since I, I guess I'm going to have to do a half hour of talking to people. And I don't know. It's funny. I don't. I don't really like doing these monologues. But then I start in on them, and by the time I'm finished, I find that you know, 30 minutes has gone by, and I better talk to my regular audience. But stand by, because I may not be able to go all the way. Anyway, where, where were we? Okay. So um, I'm going to say something here, and I don't want to panic you. I don't want you to go into a apoplectic fit when I say this. But there's a good chance that within, say, two or three months, a lot, a few, quite a few of you out there watching me or watching this are going to be dead. Now, why do I say that? I say that because there's a little thing running around called the coronavirus, and it hasn't hit the United States yet, yet, because we're lucky that it hasn't hit yet, all right? It, there are a couple of cases here in the United States, and that's the way it always starts. A few little cases here, a few little cases there, and then a few more cases, then a few more cases, and oh my God, Nellie closed the barn door. We have ourselves a pandemic, all right? And this disease is not just some kind of phony science that we're talking about here. We're talking about something that's already killed something like 2,600 Chinese. Uh, and I don't infected how many hundreds of thousands more. Now you say, oh, okay, 2,600 out of that isn't much. Still, it's a massive illness that has literally taken a whole country and reduced its economy by 40% because of the disease, because they have to take care of it somehow, and they have to be able to afford it. And, they, and it's causing problems because people don't want to buy things from them. Apple can't get their stuff made. Apple's being affected by it. Everything's being affected by it. Even our own stock market, which as of today is down over 2,000 points this week. That's quite a drop. Uh, you know, so, I mean, we're, we're, we, we, it, it, this is, this, uh, you could, you, all, oh, you can say whatever you want to about this. Uh, oh, no, it's not really a problem because only two of 2,600 out of all those Chinese that got it died from it. Well, it's a little worse in, uh, in, in percentages in, uh, in South Korea, which has also caught it. I think we've heard nothing from North Korea, but I don't think they're catching it because nobody goes there. Okay, so maybe maybe they were the smartest people of all by having a nation that has nothing to do with the rest of the world, and that's preventing them from getting this uh, this virus. But the coronavirus is a is a a very real thing. It is a very lethal thing, and a, a, a couple of you out there watching me might be dead in about three months. Now, well, it hasn't hit the United States yet. It's going to. The CDC today warned that it's not a question of if, it's a question of when, okay? And this is from the CDC, who used to have a lot of people to handle a situation like this, but unfortunately don't anymore, because that son of a bitch, Trump, cut their funding. Yes, he cut the funding to the CDC, the very people who keep us healthy, and he tried to uh, do it to the Institute of, he- of, of Health, but he wasn't able to do it. But he, he went after the CDC and cut them by that much. Tonight, he goes on television and tells us, nothing to worry about, we've got the whole thing in hand. You know, We've got it all taken care of, it's no problem here, it's a, it's a perfect situation, it was a perfect call. Yeah. Uh, it was a, it's a perfect situation. Uh, we, we've got the best doctors in the world here, and you know, but the best doctors in the world are not going to stop a virus. 
What's going to stop a virus is if you have an infrastructure in place that somehow keeps it in check, and he just got rid of that infrastructure. And now he's going on the air and telling everybody, don't worry, it's going to be okay. Look, uh, you know, only uh, 2,600 people died in China. That's not a lot. Well, wait till it gets up to 10,000, and then, then tell me it's not a lot, okay? Um, and I, 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 he gets on the air, and he gives us all this medical information, and I'm thinking to myself, when did he die and become a doctor? Where, what, 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 the, what, what medical facility did he get his doctor, his doctor's uh, disease, his physician's disease uh, degree from his d disease? Yeah, his, uh, you know, I mean, what makes him a doctor? I mean, he was he's just amazing. He doesn't know a thing about science. He doesn't believe in science, and now. When something scientific happens, he tries to act like, well, I know what's happening, you know, and here are the statistics, and, and I, we're going to put Mike Pence in charge of the whole thing. Oh, good. I feel really safe now. And then we're told we have the best doctors in the world, we have the best hospitals in the world, and I just went to one of the best hospitals in America last night and got screwed with, Okay. Uh, they made a major mistake, okay? Now, it, it wasn't life-threatening because what I was going to, the procedure I was going to have wasn't life-threatening. But what happens when that piece of equipment isn't there for the doctor who's doing something that's about to save somebody's life? So don't tell me, Donald Trump, that we have the best medicine in the world. You know who has great medicine? France has great medicine. Uh, uh, the Scandinavian countries have great medicine. Cuba has great medicine. You know, that's become a big argument about Bernie Sanders, that he said something positive about, about uh, Cuba. But we do know that Cuba has a very good medical system. They have, help, they have their version of Medicare for all. And when you get sick, you get taken care of in Cuba. Now, it's, it's hard to believe that a country that is still back in the Stone Age, because we put them there, uh, it has that good a health care and a better health care system than we do, but they do, okay? Uh, they also have a very good educational system. That, that's why, remember that kid who escaped, they, they escaped from Cuba or something, and he wanted to go back, and they didn't want to let him. And the, 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 Anyway, he went back to Cuba and got a great education. So, anyway, uh, you know, there are good things to say about Cuba, even though, it's a terrible country to live in, and I wouldn't want to have lived there under the Castro regime. Uh, but that was then, and this is now, and times change, and even though it's still a communist country, kind of, you know. But anyway, uh, w w don't tell us that we've got the best medical system in the world. When, you, when, you, when it's, it's a medical system that's being run by insurance companies who are only out for one thing, and that's profit, Okay. And don't tell me that we, we've got a, a, we're all safe because of our medical system. Believe me, after yesterday, as soon as I cannot go back to Mount Sinai, I'm not going back to Mount Sinai. The only reason I might go back there is if I have a heart attack and it is the closest hospital, okay? But otherwise, I don't want to go back there. I don't want to have anything to do with those idiots, you know? Um, and so don't tell me that one of the best hospitals in America is an example of how good the American medical system is, okay? All right. Uh, but we have a problem here where we're going to be facing, we're going to be facing the coronavirus, no matter what anybody thinks, no matter what idiot boy tells us. And the only reason he's trying to tamp down the fear and everything is because the stock market is going crazy. I mean, he's worth a lot less today if he even owns anything, if he owns any stock. He, he's worth a lot less today than he was two days ago, okay? And, and I'm sure that was, that was the thing that hurt him most of all. He's got to get his money back, and so that's why he made his speech tonight. Um, it didn't do anything to make me feel calmer. I looked at girlfriend. I said, do you feel calmer now that the, the ship of state is right on course to solving this problem? And he, she went, no, not at all, you know. And it's not coming up from Mexico. 
So um, you can't blame it on the Mexicans. Oh, yeah, you can blame it on the Chinese. Not only Chinese, Chinese bats, okay? So uh, it's, just, it is, it's just amazing. Um, and uh, so for all of you who aren't going to be here uh, a, couple of, a couple of months from now, nice seeing you. And I might, be, I might be one of them, you know? I'm older. I'm more subject to getting this kind of disease than a lot of you are. A lot of you can hold up to it much better. Uh, American Patriot says, go to Cuba. I didn't say that, American Patriot, you bleeping moron. I didn't say that. I didn't say I wanted to live in Cuba. I just gave you some very salient facts about Cuba and their medical system and about their, their uh, uh, educational system, and they are both considered to be very good. Now, certain freedoms in Cuba, no. Uh, the way in which they relate to the average person in Cuba, the government, no. But, you know, what I was talking about, yes. So just shut the hell up, American Patriot. In fact, you know what I'm going to do to American Patriot? This is what I'm going to do. Uh, <laughs> Charlie Wallace says, bye, Alex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, Charlie. You know what I'm talking about. Let me see here. Uh, 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 oh, um, um, hi, user on this channel. Oh, put user in timeout. Okay, I'm putting American Patriot in timeout. Okay, yeah. Uh, Patriot is a troll, says Carter Bing. No, he's not exactly a troll. He's there every night doing this. So it's, is that the definition of a troll? I don't think a troll does that. So, Alex, why aren't you wearing a cap? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm in solidarity with Marjorie. Girlfriend has decided she's no longer going to color her hair. And it's slowly coming in gray. And every now and then I look over at her in the middle of the night with that gray hair and I think to myself, I'm living with an old woman. Anyway, <laughs> and oh dear, if you're listening to this, I love you. I think it's going to look terrific. And the thing was, she always gave me a bad time when I colored my hair, okay, so she'd been coloring it for years now. I asked her how much she spends on getting it colored, and she said something like $175 uh, every, couple, every month or so. And I'm thinking, how much money is this woman? Where is she getting all this money from? Is she hooking on the side or something, you know, to take care of her, of her nails and her hair and her everything? But anyway, I said, that's one expense you don't have now, so we can, live, we can, we can go out and buy dinner more often. Anyway, uh, no, I gotta, excuse me, I have to, so here it is, here's a tissue, excuse me, I'm, I'm gonna blow my nose, but I'm gonna kill the mic. Yes, okay, there we go. That's pretty nice. Well, I think I'll open up the lines and go to them early here. Let me see here, what do I have? I gotta find, uh, there we go, is that, uh, oh, here we go, there's Skype. I have trouble finding. I got too much stuff on here. Uh, <laughs> and I open the lines, and then people can call me, and I'll talk to them, and they'll talk for a while. And I may have to run off to the bathroom at some point here. My stomach is roiling tonight. Just wait till I get this 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 uh, operation. I'll have to go to the bathroom every minute and a half. But. Uh, my doctor said it isn't going to be that bad. He said, yesterday I talked to him, he said, ah, it's nothing. You know, it's a little, some, some discomfort. I asked him about my tiredness, my, um, uh, what do you call it, mild uh, fatigue, which isn't quite so mild. And he says, no, that happens a couple of weeks afterwards, as a matter of fact. Hey, here comes, uh, here comes Charlie Wallace, and I just want to say to Charlie, uh, goodbye, Charlie. It's Please. been nice knowing you. I you know, no. and uh, it's, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be, we're going to have to, we're going to have to deal with it. Let me see here. Let me see here. First of all, Charlie Wallace. Let me get him here. And then we'll open the lines for Phil, who will then come in and tell me that there's nothing with the, vi with the virus or anything like that. Don't worry about it, Alex. It's not going to, you're not going to come get us. It's all, it's all fake science. All right. Let me see here. I have to, uh, I have to find Phil here. Let me put Phil in here. Uh, let me see here. Where's Phil? 
No, it's not there. Okay, hold on a second. Da -da 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 -da. Let me also put uh, Jeff Zeller there. This only happens once during the show that I have to do this much work to get people on. And then I uh, get, um, um, uh, let me see here, uh, Zeller, uh, let me see here. Uh, oh, there we go. I, he, he, I no longer have him on as that. I have him on some big name. There we go. Hello, everybody. How are you all? Good. Yeah. Yeah. You there? Enjoying my last days on Earth. Yeah. Or enjoying your last days on Earth, are you? Okay. Here comes Bree. Hold on a second. Got it. Maybe they'll quarantine us. You know? Yeah. 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 It's not, it's not good. You know, it's not good. It's good. I, huh? I got uh, Robitussin with Cody. R Robitussin with Cody, and that'll take care of you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, uh, 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 um, Bree, there, your fan, yeah. there's something with your fan that's, uh, you know, kind of loud. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah, that's a little better now. Yeah. With all that equipment, you should get a directional mic. Me? Yeah. Don't, what equipment? Let's not get into more technical advice here. Yeah. You want you want to do that? Go to work for some computer company and get then move to India and become part of tech support. Okay. Well, I, that's what I've become. <laughs> yeah, but it's amazing how little you know. <clears throat> hey, I saw the pandemic i have found i'm not sick and i have found that nylon carpet fibers yeah you breathe in enough of them you yeah. won't get the virus oh we won't get the virus <laughs> i see no room. Well, i had a friend in thailand who said is that he drank so much that alcohol that the virus didn't stand a chance <laughs> yeah well well if you believe that kind of stuff oh, yeah. liver <laughs> no. We're, oh well, there, there was a. I've got one for you. There was a uh, uh, minister of uh, health. I, I don't know if it was health or if it was somewhat related to health in Indonesia. She said that women could get pregnant from men in a swimming pool because there's a certain strong kind of sperm that could get a woman pregnant in a swimming pool. Mm -hmm. did, did you did you mention to that same woman? That chlorine will kill the sperm? Uh, I didn't say it. It was in the news. Uh, I think oh. if they sit on the toilet seat, they get it, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the whole thing is Trump creates his own world, his own reality, uh, you know, around it. I, I look at it this way. I you mean, wait, hold on. You mean, you mean Dr. Trump? Dr. Trump. <laughs> yeah. uh, I had a German teacher in high school who would crazily overpronounce things and it actually worked because the, he would overpronounce it so that if we got any half if we said it half the way he did it we would be closer to how it was said and and this is kind of what you need on on a global scale for health like the CDC has to raise the alert mm -hmm. um, so that you know, the average Joe will take it seriously and, and that, that, that they'll be aware and be concerned about it. Mm -hmm. Now, at the same time, Rush Limbaugh said it was a cold virus. It's not the rhinovirus. It's a coronavirus. So it's more like a flu virus. And it behaves like the flu, but it seems to be more uh, contagious. And this, this is probably because we do not have an immunity built up to it. So, uh, you know, it it is one of a number of coronaviruses. And I have news for you. There's like two or three thousand that are in that are in labs that we have no idea what they are. So it just so happens that this one leaked, and it, it's you know it's causing all this. The, the best solution is for yes, it will be disseminated in the populations, and that's probably best. We need to fight it. You know, we're always so concerned about how do we close it down and build a, a new a new vaccine for it and X Y Z. This is nature, you know, and. Uh, nature is as nature does. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, um, uh, I think if a few Chinese didn't eat bats for dinner, probably well, we would be better. I got news for you, Alex. Waldorf Astoria, uh, two years ago, uh, National Geographic did a special, New Yorkers eating uh, exotic cuisine in the Waldorf. 
yeah. including bats. Including bats. Yeah. Well, you know. In New York City. So, uh, you know, I mean, I don't that this was an attack on our economy by the Chinese, that they sent over or they're disseminating this virus just to weaken the rest of the world so their economy will remain. Uh, will you be you don't one. really believe that, do you, Phil? Hey, I heard, you know, I heard it today on my Trump phone, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, it's only their economy that's suffering at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Alex lost in uh, two thousand points. Uh, that's that's a lot. Let me let me see what Trump says. Uh, he's he's not there. He's fighting. He's fighting viruses. No, yeah, he's busy busy. Uh, he's busy uh, doctoring to people. Yeah. yeah. He'll be giving out vaccinations next week, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. He just might. Only to Republicans. Well, supposedly there was a guy I saw, a guy I saw on TV tonight. Admittedly, he was on MSNBC, but he was a doctor, and he said that almost everything Trump has said about this is wrong. Wrong. I heard that. <laughs> is wrong. Did you he know. get his education from the Schumer University? <laughs> no, no. He but he said that everything uh, everything he was saying was wrong about how much cold, you know, how much, how you could get it and not get it. I mean, he actually believes the SAR, this virus is going to be gone once the hot weather gets here. Oh, like yeah. it's not hot in Africa where a lot of these viruses yeah, are. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they got it in Iran. I don't know about Africa. Did they get it in Africa? No, they got it in Iran, but they won't say how much is in Iran. They're very <clears throat> quiet about that. Uh, Qum, is, is that is Qum in, in Saudi Arabia or Iran? What? Uh, that holy city where they people go to pray, uh, I think it's called Kum, uh, K U M or K O M. Never heard of it. Q, Q U Q O M. Oh, it's uh, one of the holiest cities in in Iran, and uh, so people go from all over mm -hmm. to pray there, uh, yeah. and uh, that's that's where most of the cases have uh, shown up in Iran. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord, it's, then they I gotta go tell back you. Home. You know, when we talk about climate change, you you see most of the effects, and, and it's the same. It's kind of like the people that Bernie Sanders champions. They're the ones. If you don't have money, you're the you're going to be affected. So you know, it's kind of like for Trump, climate change is not a big deal because he can get in his air conditioned car and he you know drink a bottle of water, as as a lot of people can. I'm not just saying Trump, but so it doesn't it doesn't have an effect on them. Same thing. If if you get the coronavirus and you have good health care, you're going to be fine. Um, but the problem is, is that we don't. We have people being, you know, in Florida going to get checked for coronavirus, getting charged $10,000. That's ridiculous. Well, they're not going to go to the hospital. They're going to That's wait right. until they're really sick, and then they'll go to the hospital, yeah. and then it's too late. And then it'll, and then it will be charged more because they'll have to go to emergency. Yeah, you know, and some will get turned away. They'll wait, I mean, it's just on, crazy. They'll wait till they're on Medicare, and uh, then it'll cost less. They'll be dead by then. <clears throat> That's how you thin the herd. Well, you know, it's, for, for it, most I, people, I, I, it's not a death sentence, you know. And if you've got good health care, you're going to be okay. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. And if you're not susceptible to getting sick. Well, some people are, are more susceptible than others to getting really sick from this. And they haven't been able to find out why, and they don't know why. Their immune systems might be down. They might be down, I, whatever. Bill says... Uh, <laughs> You know, you know, but I, I hardly think that I'm going to go to uh, Donald Trump for medical advice. Well, I got my medical degree from Trump University. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Well, they, <laughs> they, had, they, had a, they had a very good medical well, school there, didn't they? Yeah. 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 We've Just done a lot of studies. If you remember, Doctor Phil. Mm -hmm. If you remember, uh, during George W. Bush's administration, there was an issue with um, the markets as well, and he gave a talk and. A lot of research has been done, and, and you know this goes back to Aristotle, logos, pathos, and egos. And it's if you don't have the credibility, then uh, your your message is not going to be received in the same way. However, what Trump does is very smart because he he has lessened the overall credibility of everything. So he he basically says, you know, you can't trust the media. So what he what he becomes then is it's all about beliefs. It's what you believe. So if you believe Trump then you believe Trump. And there's no other, you need no other source because he sort of cut off that avenue of credibility. He's he's damaged it to the point where, you know, people 
won't trust anything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I heard today on Fox that uh, they were saying that Trump spoke to the nation uh, and didn't treat them as uh, that he was speaking down to them, that he was speaking in uh, a layman's terms and on, uh, you know, on an honest level. Yeah, he was talking in idiot gibberish. Well, whatever you call it, that's that's what uh, many other people call it, is that he was being honest with them and talking to them in a way that they can understand, not talking down to them like some elitist. He couldn't talk down to anybody. He doesn't know how to talk down to anybody because he has no brain to talk down to them with. Oh, you're 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 brainwashed. That's the brain. You no, know, that's your easy answer to everything I have to say, Phil. And I'm brainwashed. That I'm so stupid that I'm brainwashed. And then you're talking about somebody not talking down to people. Yeah. Listen, every- I didn't say I was Trump. <laughs> You know, I mean, come on. You know, this man's going to turn this whole country into a parking lot. And I, I hope he th- well, does well, for another Well, to begin years. with, to begin with, like, well, he was talking about the fact that sooner or later there will be a president for life. Uh-oh. He said that oh. recently. That was his most recent uh, pronouncement. He was greeted like a king in India. Yeah, well, you know, Modi is the biggest jerk in the world. You know, this guy is like an yeah, anti-Semite. He's everything the, else. What has he got a billion people that uh, uh, he leads? Most people that, won't know uh, that. They'll just, I mean, most people, people think it's good. They'll think, hey, Trump went to India. He looked really good. Yeah. 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 And he did. That's what most people will think. He did. <laughs> yeah. Modi, Modi wants to get rid of certain groups of people in India, and he's, like, horrible. He's just terrible. Yeah. He's, he's an ugly, what? ugly person. And, and, and nobody to better kiss his ass than uh, the, uh, to kiss the ass of than Donald Trump. Well, I think that they, you know, we should get along with uh, the, uh, the next largest uh, population. We, and we do, get, we, do get, we do get along with them without kissing their butt because they need us to. He didn't kiss. You know, he, he yes, viewed he did. The anytime, anytime somebody goes down there. Listen, he saw the Taj Mahal that was successful. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, he wanted to see what a successful Taj Mahal was like. You know why he took <laughs> oh, yeah. he did? Hmm? Because he had the, uh, the casino tables that he was moving into that Taj Mahal. You know, Baccarat, uh, mm-hmm. poker, and uh, roulette. Mm-hmm. Anyway, the point is, is that... Uh, he, he, Trump loves to go to places where they, 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 they treat him like he's a celebrity. He has such an ego, it's amazing. You can't admit, you can't deny he doesn't have a supreme ego. He is a celebrity. Do you have a star on uh, the Walk of Fame? No. No, but he does, and it keeps getting chopped up every three days. Well, that's because people revere it so they want to take it home. I see. Mm. I see, <laughs> If, you, if that's your answer to that one, yeah. Um, but um, I, I, you know, I mean, uh, so you're not saying there isn't a, a a problem of a pandemic hitting our shores. Oh, I think there is a problem there. there what Trump said, and I agree with him. How do you feel about the fact that he left us vulnerable because of getting rid of a lot, most a good deal of the CDC? Well, I do know that what he did was he stopped travel, uh, which no, was... No, no, no. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking about that, Phil. I'm talking about the fact that he stopped funding at least, uh, a, a, what, a quarter of the funding, a half of the funding of the CDC? Wait a minute. Who is our prime, prime uh, um, barricade against disease in this country? I don't know that that's, uh, in fact, accurate. Oh, it is accurate, Phil. Uh, It is absolutely. uh, uh, Charlie agreed with me. Charlie's at 100% accurate, what I just said about Trump and the CDC. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, do you know that to be true, Jeff? Yes. Yes. So Phil is the only one who didn't get the memo. Yeah, $2.5 billion to, to, to fight this virus and then uh, Pelosi's trying to weaponize it and say it should be $8 billion. 
And uh, 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 McCarthy, what's his name? Who's the uh, the Republicans uh, are saying they want four billion. Four, four billion. They want four billion. So yeah, uh, who's the uh, uh, second in command in the House uh, uh, or the command in the House for the Republicans? Starts with an M. He's from California. Who from California? Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's a congressman from California. He would be the Speaker of the House if Pelosi didn't have uh, a, a majority. Mm -hmm. huh? Well, that, he's the one that said four billion. Uh, so I think you know it's gonna they're gonna settle somewhere in between. It isn't a question That's of settling the, in between. The, if he hadn't taken away funding of the CDC, we would true. have the money to do it with. We do. No, no we would. It has we to would. Do. It's just a special. This is a special thing like going to war. You need to appropriate money for a specific purpose. And just to throw money no, at the CDC. No, no, no. He took the money from the CDC, and you know where he put it? Into in the, free juju bees for the rich. Yeah, well, I, didn't he build a wall with it? <laughs> May well have, Phil. Well, well that's that's moving that, to, to stop the, the virus from coming over. It's on the other side of the wall. Mm -hmm. Charlie knows. Yeah. But one <laughs> not through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be another exhausting evening, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, tell it, yeah. Huh? I don't know why I do this. I, mean, I just, I leave here, I'm exhausted. You know, I, I could have, like, just been in bed early. Oh. Don't you like being challenged? Huh? Don't you like being challenged, or would you like just I, every... I like being challenged. Oh, yeah. I don't like being exhausted. Oh. Yeah. You know. So. Well, you, you, you got cancer. Huh? You got cancer. You're going to get tired. I've got cancer. Yeah, well, I, got, I got a headache from this radiation, and, uh, you know. Yeah. So I was listening earlier. Uh, they're going to do it next week, the seeds? I don't know when they're going to do it. Uh, the, she told me, oh, called up... Doctor's nurse called me up today, said, first of all, we want to apologize. I said, thank you very much. Uh, I, I said, she said, uh, we're t checking with the OR, the operating rooms, uh, to see what day is available. So it could be either Friday or at the very latest next Tuesday. So I'm assuming it's going to be next Tuesday, right? And I will go there and I'll get dressed again and then something else will happen. You know, because it's, uh, Friday the twenty ninth or is Saturday the twenty ninth leap year. Uh, Saturday, I think. Saturday. Yeah. Well, they'll probably want to do it on Friday so they get the volume in uh, on February. You know. <laughs> well, I I'm going to be uh, in the operating room, anesthetic induced, uh, yeah. uh, coming out of the anesthesia and all of that, while Super Tuesday is going on. And I oh won't boy. be on that night, and I'm just as glad because I can avoid the whole damn thing, okay? Because it's going to be a cluster you-know-what. Yep. A cl cluster I still want to be monetized you-know-what. <laughs> uh, I want to be, you know, I want to be, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be horrible, you know? And I'm telling you, I watched the whole debate today. I had nothing to do. I figured I'll watch the debate. I recorded it. And it's embarrassing. It is just embarrassing. Um, uh, to begin with, and, and Shecky came up with this, so I have to credit him with this. Do you know who Bernie Sanders is? Harry David? No. <laughs> Think about it for a moment. Howard Beale. Ah. I'm mad as hell and I can't take it anymore. Uh -huh. He's Howard Beale. Okay. Not a Harold Stassen no. stand. Do you always have to try and top a joke with one that isn't? <laughs> of course. Yeah. That's a very well, good. Uh, it's a very good line. I mean, he really is. Uh, he really is Howard Beale. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, a lot of people listening don't even know who the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> Put two, two together. <clears throat> but he was the guy in Network. He I, goes, I, I didn't watch that whole film all the way through, but I either. But you know, I'm mad as hell and I can't take this anymore. Sure, you know, from you know. Network. Yeah. 
and he was the mad prophet of the airwaves, and that's kind of who uh, who um, 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 uh, uh, Bernie is. He's a mad prophet of the Democrats. Yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't like any. I I think the only one I kind of liked was Buttigieg. I thought he at least had a little dignity. I thought Bloomberg. Oh, yeah, he's he's okay. all he's has a lot of show. Yeah, yeah, a lot and of style. Sanders won, and that uh, you know, there's an he didn't win anything. Nobody won anything. The, who won was Donald Trump uh, last night. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Absolutely. You know, and the more debates they have, they should know by now to tell CBS. Nah, I don't think we're going to do one now. And by the way, CBS did the worst job of hosting Actful. that thing. Out of control. It, not only out of control, they were trying to, like, uh, stir the pot, you know? Yeah. They were trying to gin it up. Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't like it. I thought it was the worst run of it, all. It and, to, and now the uh, final big question isn't about global warming. The final big question isn't about uh, uh, the coronavirus. The final big question we're going to ask you is, what's your motto? World peace. You know, it's kind of like kind of like Miss America. You know, what are yeah. you praying for? World peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you hear a fan? They probably they were the, you know they're thinking like, we got to make this different. How do we we got to ask them something that's totally different and you know unique for this? How what do we come up with? If you Let's were a tree, about, what know. kind of tree would you be? You know, <laughs> well, Bush could have been a tree because he's a bush. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, it just it was it was it just amazingly bad. And they were terrible, yeah. just terrible. But that's what you got to choose from. No, that is what, well, what we've got to choose from are uh, the people who want to run for president. Right. The people who don't want to run for president are the people who should be. Okay. Well, make it, it always is. What did you, what'd you so say? What did you say, Bree? I, I, I've said that before. The person I want is the person who doesn't want the job. Doesn't want the job. Yeah. And if elected, I will not serve. That's the guy I want. Yeah. 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 Uh, because who want? Uh, you know, I don't know. Would I want that job? No, not on a bet. You know, especially all the misery you got to go through to, to deal with it and to do it. You know, I, th I think if Buttigieg were 10 years older and he had run his town like super well and everybody has had really great things to say about him, I think he could easily take it. I think yeah. he's 10 years shy of, of, of the experience uh, that people would want and name recognition in order to do it. Well. If he had appeared on Stephen Colbert, you know, once or twice when he was a mayor, et cetera, et cetera, he would have he would have had a shot. I think he's still got a shot. I'll tell you who's got a shot. OK, uh, is Bloomberg. And I'm going to tell you why. And a good shot. If this goes to a brokered convention, which, very, which it could very easily do, you know, Bernie could not, maybe not have all the votes he needs to go to the convention as a winner, okay? So they're going to have to have at least one vote before all the delegates are released. And at that point, Bloomberg swoops in and starts grabbing them up like crazy. What, what states are in the Super Tuesday? Is California, I know. What other ones? Texas. Uh, Mexico. Peru. Yeah. Now, yeah. seriously, uh, if he gets California, uh, Texas, and whatever states are part of the Super Tuesday, I don't think he's going to be stoppable. He, he's going to have uh, enough. I don't, think that... he'll, I don't think he'll get Texas. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that... It, he's ahead he, in the polls. He, 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 he Is he ahead in the Florida. polls in Texas? Yeah. Really? Well, I'm not talking in the general election. No, no, the, yeah, Super Tuesday. I'm talking Let's about talk Super Tuesday. Yeah, he's ahead in the polls. Yeah. It, Texas, it, it, where's Florida, Biden? Texas, I thought Biden Indiana would be Florida. ahead in Texas. You know? Yeah. So uh, now all all of those states have an enormous uh, amount of delegates, and he needs yeah. 1991. So he's got some momentum now, and not that. What do you mean he needs he, 91? 1991 is the number of yes. delegates. Well, he is the, not going to swoop all those up on Super Tuesday. Well, no, but. All I'm saying is that if, if it goes to a brokered convention, Bloomberg could well get the nomination. Uh, so could Howdy Doody. 
you know, uh, if it went to a broker. So could Biden, Why yeah. could it also go to Howdy Doody, Phil? Oh, mm-hmm. would, Howdy Doody could be nominated. I would uh, rather have Buttigieg than than uh, Bloomberg. In in a second. Oh, I, I I feel exactly the same way. I mean, well, you know, I'm. Of, you're right, it, Alex. It's a lot of the uh, the Democrats owe a debt to Bloomberg. Yes, absolutely. Because he got them elected. Oh, yeah, he's probably donated millions of dollars to him over the years. That's yep. right. Some have nostalgia for Biden. and, uh, and it's- The 40 uh, uh, congressional people that spun the House for the Democrats, he, he had donated, uh, I forget the exact amount. Did he say it was $100 million? Something like that. Uh, a lot of money. A lot of money. Got him elected. Is Bree frozen? No, I don't think so. Or maybe no. he is. Yeah, he is. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. But he will come back. He always does. He has to go to lunch on this show. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Hello, Patrick. How are you? I am super duper like a ninja trooper. I am. I am dying a death by a thousand cuts here, <laughs> um, because Phil's on tonight. Uh, you uh, already had the cyber knife. Yeah. No, I didn't have the cyber knife. Well, whatever it is, it's I had the, What was it called? Uh, the, uh, there's a name for what I had. It's another, yeah, it's another machine. It's another patented machine. It's supposedly better than the cyber knife. Yeah. yeah. Hey, it's not a problem. I can, I can, uh, I can help you if you don't, if you want uh, free reign. No, you know, no, 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 no. Problem. I'll watch TV. You no, know. Yeah. Well, and I, and I and I could go lie down while the rest of these people just talk to each other. You know. And it will sound like the uh, Democratic con- uh, uh, what <laughs> last night. It, 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 talking it, all over each other. It was yeah. amazing. I mean, it was just, you, did, you didn't see it at all, did you? No, of course Patrick didn't see it. I, I saw some highlights, but better than seeing the highlights were hearing yeah. the highlights <laughs> on a couple of the radio shows I listened to. Especially what you were just talking about, where we're talking over each other. And, you know, I got to say, you know, I would never vote for any of those people. But early in this process last year, Mm -hmm. talking about having adults have the presidency. And I have to say, from what I saw and heard from that debate, there were no adults on that stage. Other than perhaps Buttigieg, and <laughs> yeah. I have to say the same the previous debate too, where he said, you know, I'm one of the only Democrats up here, you know, and it just, I don't know, it seems like everybody is trying to one up everybody, which is what they should have done. Months ago, at this point in the debate season, there should be three or four of them that are that are consistently high in the polls and that people are excited about, and those are the ones that should be fighting it out. And then by the time we hit, what is it, next Tuesday or Super Tuesday, mm-hmm. that's when you're going to narrow it down to, let's say, three or two. And then it's those that are going to go, uh, what is it, in, in April? What are, if the well, unfortunately, day- unfortunately, Patrick, it's too late uh, for it to get winnowed down to two or so. Absolutely. Because I, I, if, it, if, if it was down to two or three right now, Bernie Sanders wouldn't be leading. You get what I'm saying? Because he's only got about 29%, whereas the rest of them make up the rest of it. And the, basically where people would go would be to another moderate, okay? So uh, it could well be that if, say, well, let's just say for for giggles, that Stiers and, and, Cor- and Klobuchar mm-hmm. went away uh, and it was left to three people left, um, I think... Buttigieg would have a good shot of being ahead of Bernie Sanders. You really because think he's Steyer's going to absorb a lot of that, you know, that middle ground. Do you really think that Styers doesn't want to be in the limelight anymore? I think that since he's uh, gotten some action and he's been on the stage, 
uh, I think it's intoxicating for him. Well, I think it. I think it would do the Democratic Party a great deal of good if certain people would get out of the way. I think Elizabeth Warren at this point yeah. should get out of the way. I think Klobuchar should get out of the way, and I think that the Steyer should get out of the way, because all they're doing is muddying up the track and then causing a cluster bleep like you saw last night. Mm-hmm. You know, and not that they were guilty of anything in particular, but because there were just too many of them. They were all fighting with each other. I mean, Elizabeth Warren was amazing last night. She couldn't get off her last win, so she had to reemphasize it in spite of the fact that uh, that um, uh, Bernie, uh, not Bernie, but uh, uh, Bloomberg had done something about it. Uh, and oh. uh, let me just finish this, Phil, please. Uh, and she just handled herself all wrong last night by going once again after Bloomberg on that, and when she went after him on that, and he said, well, I already took care of that. I uh, already did the disclosure agreements, and I've already decided to tell my company no more disclosure agreements in our company, non-disclosure agreements in our company. She should have come back and said, well, I'm glad I did something that made you change your ways and made you improved your company. Yeah, Instead, she just kept going at him with this. And <laughs> I looked at Marjorie, and I said, listen... Uh, this is, uh, she is terrible. She's she's just horrible. I hate her the way she's acting. He already said he took care of it. Now shut the hell up and take credit for it yourself. Well, but wait a minute, let me finish. Can I finish, Phil? Just let me finish, please. I mean, do you mind if I finish? Or, or would you like to keep talking? Would you like to jump, barge in here? Huh? Oh, get mad at me. Because I want to say something without being stopped in the process. Anyway, I uh, 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 the point. Well, I forgot what I was going to say. Go ahead, Phil. You can take over the show. You're you were talking to Marjorie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. About Warren. About yeah. Warren and how she was doing it wrong or whatever. Well, that I was really, you know, pissed at at, at, at her. And uh, then Phil last night said, well, and then she got booed, by the way. She got booed for that. Yeah. And uh, I felt it was a genuine boo. And then I listened to the, Phil last night made insisted that well, it was because Bloomberg had people there to boo her. And I listened to the rest of the debate and there were more boos for other got people there. <laughs> and then it had nothing to do with Bloomberg. It had to do with whatever they were saying that they didn't approve of. Which, by the way, CBS should have told the audience, please, no booing or reacting to everything yeah. that they say. Because, no, because you just don't do that. This is not a wrestling match, you know? This is a serious conversation about the soul of our country. Mm. Now you can talk, Phil. I'm through. What I was going to say was that uh, Bloomberg actually said to Warren that uh, bringing up what she brought up uh, will change the environment of his company, which will make a change to many companies across the country. So actually, Bloomberg did uh, acknowledge... Yeah, and after he did that, she kept going at him. Right. That's when he said... No matter what I do, it's never going to be good enough. Yeah, but, well, that, but, that, but that's why she's a stupid candidate, because she didn't know that that was the time to take credit for changing Bloomberg and I changing, heard, you know, what are you doing? Yeah, go. Another clip of, uh, of uh, uh, Warren. And uh, it, the, I'm not sure that it was last night and it got, tape, it got put together with last night. I, I don't know if it was phony or real, but what she said was, that she was uh, the visibly pregnant thing, and she got fired, and then she went after uh, Bloomberg uh, about the NDAs. So uh, was no, was no, that, that was about a, a statement Bloomberg supposedly made about some woman who got pregnant, and, and, and who was in, in leadership in his company, and he, he made a bad joke by saying, "Well, then why doesn't she just get rid of it?" You know, or something like that. But it was meant as a joke. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't meant to be taken seriously. But of course, Elizabeth Warren takes everything seriously. She's got a sense of a humor of a turd. But we found out that uh, she wasn't fired because she was pregnant. She had, was nine years ago or, or so. She was on a TV show and said oh. something totally opposite to that. 
And and this visibly pregnant thing, which she's been pushing for the last several months, it turns out is not true. And so who said that? Was, Who said that? Um, I can't remember who I'm said sure it. it was on, I'm sure it was on Fox, I, I Phil, or clip. Drudge. Uh, or, I saw the video yeah. clip of her saying, hey, you know, I just decided to raise a family. And it, it was totally benign. And it was at least mm -hmm. 9, 10, 11 years ago. I don't remember exactly how long. Uh, but uh, this clip uh, was with a, uh, a, a fairly neutral party interviewing her. Yeah, yes, to, uh, to Patrick. You know, she was being interviewed. I, I remember seeing the clip. She was being interviewed by it, something like PBS or maybe yes. 60 Minutes. Very, very and years ago, and uh, she had talked about that she um, had, she was pregnant, and she um, was, that was when she was working in a school. And then she had to leave her job because she was pregnant. And then she raised the family and you know, all that. So. It was her decision, according to that interview. Right. And uh, this visibly pregnant thing uh, she's been using, and that's no different than the uh, American Indian or any of these other uh, lies that she has let me, told. Let me, let, me, let me ask Charlie, because Charlie here it, it tends to like, uh, by the way, uh, Bree hasn't come back. Uh, uh, oh. uh, Charlie uh, is a, has been a fan of Elizabeth Warren's and a fan of Bernie's. Yeah. How'd you feel about these people last night? Are we being too harsh? Well, on I didn't them? watch the. I didn't. I just saw clips on new YouTube today. So. Mm -hmm. Are we being harsh? No, I mean I think they did act kind of childish. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And the only adult in the room was it was it was uh, Gubich. Uh, <laughs> Buttigieg. <laughs> I was going to say Gorbachev. Hands. Huh? If he if he gets the nomination, uh, Trump will go after you know the size of his hands, and uh, you know I mean he, he the, learned, learned it, from Marco. Yo. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The size of his hands. Have you seen the stubby little little sausage fingers yeah, that Trump, uh, that Trump has? Well, if you put Trump hand up to Buttigieg hands, which one's bigger? Well, uh, I would say probably, I would imagine Buttigieg, if you're judging the penis size, is equal to the hand size. <laughs> <laughs> because according to, uh, what's her name, the stripper, uh, the porn star, uh, he has a sausage-like penis. I think the heavier you get, the smaller it gets. Is that true for your brain as well? <laughs> Not as long as you're a Republican. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> then you'd think I'm brilliant. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, I, I like I like Trump as our president because he makes me feel better about my weight. You know, <laughs> you it should do the same thing for you, Phil. Yeah, but I don't play golf. You know, because he is a fat pig. Let's admit that. If we don't admit anything else about Trump, he is a fat, slovenly pig. Yeah, but he's sleeping with Melania, and we're not. Oh, no, he's not sleeping with Melania. <laughs> and I'm sure maybe there are other people that say uh, they are. I don't are. think he's sleeping. No, yeah. I don't think they've uh, they've been doing it for a long time. Uh, well, Barron's got Trump hair. Jeez. Well, what, what's that have to do with it? Well, he's, you know, he's definitely Trump's son. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Unlike the belief that Ronan Farrow's father is Woody Allen. Yeah. I see the resemblance. Really? <laughs> yeah, sure. Both, they're both uh, uh, men. And you know, nobody in any interview with Ronan Farrow ever approaches that question. No. Now that Ronan Farrow is being vindicated uh, because of the Weinstein uh, conviction, uh, how's, he being, how's he being vindicated? Well, he continued to go after it. I know that there were two women that broke the story first, but they're saying that Roan and Farrow... Listen, I think the uh, whole Weinstein thing is... I was gonna, I'm just going to do a thing about this tomorrow night. Um, my PC froze and then a colleague stopped by. That's Bree's excuse. Oh. Okay, well, let me just let me just get rid of him at, at, on the, uh, the thing here. Hold on a second. 
He, he's in number two spot. Is that it? Okay. And if I, uh, no, that's not it. Okay. He's what it's is one, what, what even is he? He's a spot. He's uh, he's he's not number one. Number three. Four. No. Number four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, he's number four. All right. Okay. There we go. We'll get rid of him there. Um. Um. Uh, what, what, what were we talking about? I forgot. And, huh? And Weinstein. Ronan Farrow and oh, Weinstein. Oh, yeah. I was going to get into talking about Wein, uh, Weinstein tomorrow night because I have nothing to talk about for the first half hour. Mm-hmm. So I'll get in that to that tomorrow night because what I had to say was more than just Weinstein, but another case that went on years ago that was very sim- It was similar in nature. Okay. Uh, but... Uh, Weinstein, I you know, I, I find him always found him disgusting and vile, <laughs> uh, and I I thought his personage was terrible, and the way in which he he bought Hollywood Oscars uh, was uh, who? Uh, who um, uh, it's uh, Brie. It's Brie, but he's sending messages in it. Mm-hmm. Picture. Mm-hmm. It's annoying. Anyway. Um, is there a, is there a, a common link between Weinstein and Epstein that they're both Jewish? Uh, you know, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, we Jews like to rape women. You know that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, um, if the 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 fact is that Weinstein's just I always found a disgusting, deplorable human being. But this whole thing with Weinstein has been a known fact in Hollywood for decades. Yeah. Okay, I first heard about it 20 years ago, and it was common knowledge about him. And everybody went, oh, well, that's just Harvey. You know, that was their attitude about it. And uh, I always thought it disgusting and vile. But the fact was that these women knew there was no way they didn't know this was Weinstein's nature. Okay, no way, unless they were so out of it and so uh, so so naive that they hadn't gotten the memo, which was a not really a memo. It was really a mimeograph pamphlet, okay? Uh, and they still went up to his room with him. I mean, the idiocy. Do you think, well, I can go up there and he won't do it to me. What, do you really think that? You know, he does it to every woman who will come up to his room. So don't go up to his room. Meet him for lunch and discuss business. Tell him you want the part over lunch. Don't go to his room. I'm sure there were women saying to them, don't go up to his room, but they went up to his room. At what point do we have to say, how many people have to know about this guy before the message gets around to these women that they shouldn't go up to Harvey Weinstein's room? You know, and and, uh, maybe I'm being a sexist pig. Go ahead, write me nasty letters and things like that. But I'm not finding much sympathy for that. I'm not finding much sympathy for a woman who gets raped by Harvey Weinstein and then keeps sending him, sending him nice emails and having dinner with him, you know? And then, and then I'm being told by the psychiatrists and so on and the psychologists, well, that's the way rape victims are, you know? They, mm-hmm. they, they keep seeing the person. I don't know that I necessarily buy that. I've known women who've been raped and they didn't go out with their rapist again, Okay. Um, I just, it's not that I feel sorry for Harvey. I just think he's the victim of the Me Too movement. He's the the victim of a lynch mob, okay? And if he were a victim of his own devices, I'd say, okay. If he had been found guilty of this in in, in not the same atmosphere, I think I would feel better about it, you know? But this isn't a win. This was a lynch. Can, yeah. can this uh, be attributed to maybe like Stockholm syndrome, where uh, people identify with their uh, captors? And yes, uh, their captors, Phil, or, not their rapers. They, you know, when you're being raped, it's not, you're, stock, it's not Stockholm syndrome. That's a whole different deal. Well, it's yeah, that I'm, when you're when you're when you're captured by somebody and you're being held, let's say, you know, in the basement or whatever. Eventually, you start liking your captors because that's your best defense. Patty Hearst was a perfect example of Stockholm yeah. Syndrome. Wasn't she stooping her captors? Uh, yes, she was. Yeah. Yeah, but this, but this, but it's not, you're trying, Phil, you're trying to justify that you're right, that, that what Harvey Weinstein did and his victims did was Stockholm Syndrome, and it wasn't. That's not Stockholm Syndrome. I- 
I know what Stockholm syndrome is. No, you don't. This is you a form, did. A, a form of Stockholm syndrome. No, it's where, not. That's why they keep going no, back. No, it's not, Phil. Okay, so it's Finland's, uh, uh, Denmark. Phil, why don't you say I'm wrong? I guess it isn't Stockholm syndrome, but it could be something else. Okay. Oh, yeah, Stockholm syndrome. You know, now I may be wrong in this, but I just think that I, I'm not going to have that much sympathy for somebody who keeps going back for seconds. You know, well, what? You, you want to get raped again? That, that's why I thought it was some psychological thing that may cause If them something to that horrendous happens to anybody, they don't really go back. It's not, you know, I never met a, a Holocaust survivor who said to me, God, I long for the concentration camps. Huh. Well, I've seen now. These three women wanted jobs. jobs. <laughs> they, no, they wanted jobs. But then if they went back for more, what does that make them, Charlie? Hookers. You know, well, it, 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 the, he it, had the power. Well, he, he had, had yes, power. he he had the power, but you know, you just sometimes you go, hey, you know, I'm sorry, I'm out of here. Yeah, I I don't put up with that kind of power. You know? Does a prostitute have the power, or is does the John have the power? The prostitute has the power. Well, because they have the power to say no. No, because so, no, not because they have the power to say no. They have the power because it's the John who's paying money for it. It's them. Right. That's accepting it and and actually holds all the cards in the in the deal, like Weinstein and the work. No, uh, you're reversing it, Phil. No, it, Weinstein is the John. Oh boy! And uh, these women had the power no, no, to no, say no. Or no. I'm just saying that if they were doing it for the job, <clears throat> you know, the, 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 that's not to be lauded. All right? Of course not. You know, and but the fact that he had the power. And used it when there were a lot of other people in Hollywood who had the same power and were using it as well. I mean, we've all known about the legendary casting couch in Hollywood. You know, hey, uh, I uh, quit uh, uh, Disney the other day, right? Bob Iger, did he did he just leave Disney? No, no. Uh, yeah, I read that uh, no, he left the CEO, but he's now in, he's oh. an executive in charge of something. He's He's got a, even a higher calling. He's running all their entertainment ventures. And oh. Disney doesn't have any <clears throat> kinds of uh, scandals, right? And they have. Oh, I think of they had quite a few at the time. Yeah. I don't... You know, I'm sure. Look, the casting couch has been a thing that's gone on in Hollywood for years, and I always found it disgusting, and I always found it wrong. Uh, but it has gone on, and there were people in Hollywood who took advantage of that, you know, because it was considered oh, it was okay because everybody around you said, "Hey, what? You aren't exercising your power over these people that way," you know, and it was terrible. It was wrong. I knew it was wrong the first time I ever heard about it. Was but, Gold Goldwood uh, one of those guys? Oh, that, listen, uh, 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 mayor. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 um, 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 Louis B. Mayer. Yeah, come on, yeah. that guy. I think they they said. I think I heard he was fucking Shirley Temple. Okay, you know, or my, maybe that was Daryl Zanuck. I don't know, but you know, the fact was that the casting couch was uh, was a. Well, I mean, it's rumored that. Uh, uh, for instance, Joan Crawford was a hooker before she got into movies. And that's how she got into movies. You know? So the casting couch always existed. Uh, and, and so by the time Weinstein came along, uh, he was simply, you know, um, uh, a guy who couldn't get laid, who now could because of his power. All right? Because yeah. I don't know anybody who would want to have sex with that guy. I mean... <laughs> What a disgusting, vile human being he was. And that, you know, I've, I've never seen anybody that vile looking in my life unless I every morning look in the mirror. All right? <laughs> so outside of that, he's the most vile person I've ever seen. Quasimoto. Why anybody would sleep with him. Why any woman could have sex with him for the job without vomiting all over him while having sex with him, I don't understand because he was a absolutely reprehensible disgusting human being but how was the only way he could get laid this was the only way he could get laid 
Uh, right. Did you see his wife? Uh, she was hot. The Italian. Uh, She's not with him anymore. No, no, no. You know, as soon as she knew that the end was here, she dumped him. Yeah. But she, you know, she married the guy. Yeah, and, sure. You know, I mean, come on. All I'm saying is, is that uh, uh, that this guy uh, was a was a was a rat and was horrible and he was terrible and I, I agree with everything any any of the Me Tooers might say about him. Only you don't have a lynch mob. You let justice be served. And uh, I felt that the trial itself, you know, um, they're going to try and put him away for 25 years. And most other people would not have gotten 25 years for this. What did he get for the la uh, the two convictions? Was it eight? For the two convictions? What two yeah, convictions? Yeah, two convictions on this, yeah. uh, this no, New York. There, no, there were two convictions that he didn't get. There were three that he did. No, it was the other way around. No. No. I think Phil's right on that one. F yeah, th there were two. Uh, th supposedly, there were two counts that they didn't agree on. And the, the three other, major and the, counts, and the other three they yeah, did out of right. this, out of the five. Right, the three that, well, uh, that were given, this. he didn't get convicted of. Uh, and the two that he did were lesser, lesser counts. Yeah, he got the way I remember is he got on the, the two less of the of the five. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. No. Oh. Oh. So well, uh, I don't remember. Is was it fourteen years? Uh, twenty five. Twenty five. Well, so they, it's, it's twenty five possible. Now, whether they're going to give him that or not, we don't when know. When sentencing? Uh, a couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, now there yeah, are March fourteenth or, or something like that. Yeah. They're healing, uh, but he's in Rikers. No, uh, he's not. So he went to the hospital. He's in he the went, still in the hospital. Oh, but he's going to Rikers Island. If he gets out of the hospital, but he yeah. had a he had a, he had a head a heart problem. Yeah, can you see Rikers from your? Well, apartment? he wants the Jello. Okay, <laughs> is that where uh, what's his name is? Um, uh, uh, who's the uh, 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 the guy that uh, was accused of raping twenty five women with uh, quaaludes? Um, oh, Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby, I spy. No, he's not involved. But Rikers. When I said, he, you know, yeah. the Jello, you know, because that was his thing, J E L L O. Yeah, Jello. <laughs> God, I mean, he was joke Jell about Jello because he wound up in the hospital, and that's anyway. Uh, I'm sure they serve Jello at. at I'm sure they serve Jello at Mount Jell Sinai. I saw. I'm sure. Saw, I'm sure they serve Jello at Mount Sinai if yeah. they remember. I saw a meme of of Bill Cosby. <laughs> Giving uh, uh, the 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 gelatin to uh, Weinstein, and on the box it said Jello, J A I L O. Oh, <laughs> instead of Jello, yes. Did I ever mention your timing is terrible? You have terrible timing. You want to pay me to take lessons? I'll I'll you know I'll. I'll I talk don't to think I don't think this is something we can teach. Yeah, timing is not something you can teach. Hi, hi, Jeff. How are you doing tonight, Jeff? I am doing great. Yeah, what, uh, oh, here comes Ray Renati. Oh, well, Ray and Renati can take up uh, Bree's spot here. Let me see here. That would be the number four spot. And um, uh, he's glowing. He's dressed up as a miner tonight. Uh, um, I want some jello pudding. Hey, <laughs> Alex says that I should go to the Renati School of Comedy. You got any openings? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Why did he say that? Well, he said my timing sucks. <laughs> what is that? Yeah, oh, you look it's like just a little off. it looks like you're you're a miner. He's trying not to get hit by a car. I'm going. I'm a miner. I'm the coal miner. I'm the coal miner's daughter. I live in San Francisco, so mm -hmm. I decided to become the coal miner's daughter. You're the canary in the coal mine. I see. Yeah. They don't need you anymore because they're fracking. But anyway, oh, yeah. you know, uh, uh, Ouch. does anybody disagree with me about uh, about what I was saying with um, um, Weinstein? That, you know, these women should have known better because everybody knew. I mean, I knew, and I am not even in Hollywood, and I knew. Did you sleep with them? No. Well, then you knew. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and what does that say about all the women that did work with him? I mean, 
That still doesn't make what he did right. No, he didn't do right at all. He did wrong. He did horrible. But he didn't do anything less than a lot of other Hollywood producers were doing for years. You believe it was consensual? Um, not exactly. <laughs> not, not exactly. I mean, he holds power. And, and that's... Um, that was his... What can I call it? What's the word I'm looking for? That was that his was come on. I, yeah. I can get you a job in movies. Okay? Plain and simple. Mm-hmm. And they mm-hmm. thought they could get a job. They slept with Harvey Weinstein. He would do something for them. So they, you know, they held their nose and they did it. What, we just lost Ray again. Ray disappeared. Um, you know, I, I should say. He could have lost his uh, connection. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was out riding his bike. Yeah. Um, but, I, you know, I mean... Um, I thought he was, went onto the mountain or something. You know, it was a terrible process that went on in Hollywood for years, but it went on for years in Hollywood, okay? And most of the major producers did it. You know, Louis B. Mayer did it. Uh, there were a lot of p- women that had sex with Louis B. Mayer to get contracts at, at MGM. You know, and, and it was not only Louis B. Mayer, I'm sure if, if I could have Shecky on here, he could give you a list of people who had a casting couch going. Um, uh, it, was, it's, it was a terrible, a terrible thing. But rather than blame it as an indigenous uh, tradition in Hollywood, uh, it, it's something that we should be glad is gone, you know, and... The, you know, and that the Me Too people should be glad is gone. And, and you know, uh, I don't know. Can I ask a question yeah. of Patrick? Yeah. Uh, different subject. Did you hear about the shooting today in uh, in Milwaukee? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, how many people? Five or eight? Uh, a beer plant? Six were killed and the gunman killed himself. Yeah, uh, well, just you, in a beer plant. Have you ever drank that piss beer? I don't drink uh, beer. It's <laughs> enough to make you want to shoot somebody. That uh, the old Miller. Uh, Mo- wasn't it Molson? Well, Molson Coors is the, is the company name now. It used to be Miller Coors when they merged. It they still they just produce Miller in this plant in Milwaukee. Yeah. So uh, it's still Miller, but it's under the name Molson Coors. That, that's the parent company now. Isn't Molson a Canadian company? Uh, yeah, but I, I think the way that these beer companies have been sold for over the last several years, I don't know who owns anything anymore. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, it's a lot like when um, uh, Daimler Chrysler was a company. German company, you know. I mean, it yeah. just. Yeah. Oh, Jeff wants to say something. Yeah, well, is like Schlitz still in business now? Um, yeah, they, they um, some of those beers are still being brewed, mm. but by their companies, they're being brewed by Miller or another. My. Uh, my Father gave me a sip of Rheingold when I was a kid, and that was the last sip of beer I ever had. I, I will never have another beer. <laughs> it was so- oh, I like Rheingold. Come on. Do they still make it? I don't know. I haven't had it in years. Yeah. Well, you remember Miss Rheingold? No. Yeah. You know, remember Miss Rheingold, Phil? And you no. call yourself a New Yorker? I wasn't even a New York, and I knew who Miss Rheingold was. I never drank beer. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Was she on a calendar or something? No, every year they would have a different woman who was Miss Rheingold, who was the spokeswoman for the company. And they would put her on calendars and they would put her in the ads and and so on and so forth. Yeah. Do you ever do you ever remember Miss Subways? Yep. You remember Miss Subways, right, Jeff? Absolutely. Every I morning as I would drive in on the ride in on the subway to WPLJ, I would sit there and look at the latest Miss uh, Miss Subways and uh, fantasize about having sex with her. Oh, excuse me. I'm a regular Harvey Weinstein. Hey, were there any <laughs> posters left? You know, when I used to ride the subway, you 
you couldn't see through the graffiti, but you know anything that was good, they'd steal. You couldn't even steal the light bulbs. You know that light bulbs in the subway screw in the opposite way? You know, if you screw a light bulb in, you screw it in clockwise. Yeah. Light bulbs in the subway screw in counterclockwise, so you can't steal them and use them. Oh, 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 you mean, oh, so you can't put them in something else. You can't, like, right. really? I didn't know that. Yeah, well, at least when I was a kid, that's... No, that's a great, that's a gr Well, I don't think, they're yeah. probably all fluorescents in there now or whatever. Well, at least or something. Uh, well, I mean, you haven't been to New York in a long time. The subways here, you wouldn't recognize them because you go into them and it's like you're living in, uh, in you're finally living in the 21st century because they have all these LED signs in the in the subways. Yeah. yeah. The only sign I remember was little enough to ride for free, little enough to ride your knee. Yeah, yeah. If you're going to bring a kid through the turnstile, they had to sit on your knee. Right, right. And 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 still, people would have their kids sitting next to them. Yeah, yeah. In, in the handicap spot. In the handicap <laughs> spot. I wonder if I get to use that now that I have prostate cancer. Do I get to? You know, everybody laughs at prostate cancer. I don't know. I, whenever I say, you know, they go, "You have cancer? Oh, oh, that's terrible." They go, "What kind?" I go, "Prostate cancer." And the next reply is, "I know, I know somebody who has that." Yeah. No big deal. Yeah. I, you know, at least if I got a cancer that was serious, but it's not even serious. I mean, except to my doctor who's going to make 20 grand on this operation. I, on a lot of people die of prostate cancer. I mean, it's, uh, you know, because there's a lot of people that don't do anything about well, it. Well, they're usually your age, too. And, and they're 50. Or, if you're in your 50 or 60s, it's a lot more dangerous than it is at my age. Yeah. I, you know, I didn't know very much about it before. <clears throat> Yeah. Track. But David, uh, 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 Ray, turn off your audio, would you please? Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. 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 Uh, Hayjack was only 39 when he uh, contracted. Oh, yeah. When, when you get it younger, people are, uh, they're much more uh, aware of it and much more, uh, you know, uh, frightened of it. It's much more scary. Yeah. Well, he was the one that told me about the protein, proton therapy. Yeah, which he was, forget it. Forget it. I, I've talked to my doctor about it, and I looked into it. It is probably the oldest radiotherapy thing that ever was, and that the current versions of it is simply nothing but kind of a con job. Really? That the, the, the best kind to get now is the cyber knife or stereotactic. Uh, and, uh, Quadraphonic. In fact, uh, the kind that uh, uh, Vernon Nunn had couple of years back because that's all that was available where you went for uh, two months five days a week for 10 minutes each time has been replaced now by five visits of 45 minutes of really heavy uh radiation uh, so it was it was completely completely different then and times have changed i mean probably when uh, when uh, you know somebody my age uh, gets it next uh, in a couple of years, they're going to even have a better way of solving the problem. So, you know. Here comes Santa Claus. Here comes Santa, Santa Claus. Claus. <laughs> down, down Santa Claus Lane. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. It's Kevin. There he is. Hi, Kevin. How are you? Good evening. How are you? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it, 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 it's all changed. But proton therapy, I looked into it, and it turns out it's really not considered... It's considered, of all of them, the worst. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was advised against it. Uh, yeah. As well. Yeah. Just that it it just it's it, it it's not as successful as the others. Okay. But you might have been able to have the cyber knife and maybe have a half a chance, and then have the seeds as well, and the combination of the two might have killed whatever you had. Uh, no, they were going to use a machete. I had a choice between a machete and a hatchet. Yeah. Well, oh, so far as the, uh, you, the fact you said oh, it, 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 with the seeds, you couldn't have them until your prostate shrunk. Uh, yeah, that's but, right. Mine was. But they could have done that. They could have done that with hormones. <clears throat> uh, they could have done hormone treatments on you. That would have shrunk it enough so they could then do the seeds. I didn't want to play with my chest. Well, you know, so you're going around with that. You're lighter now without a prostate. Yeah. You, you're What's getting, the name of the drug that they used? The, uh, the hormone drug. 
the hormone drug is a uh, is it's just a, a female hormone that stops it, your testosterone. It's not and, estrogen or nothing, is it? Uh, it's I don't think it is estrogen exactly, but it is close to it. Uh, it I better it, I better look at what they gave me because they gave me something to shrink mine up. That's probably uh, what they gave you. You testosterone. Oh shit! That's all I need is bigger a, tits. Well, listen. When you get when you, when you get them, give me a call. I want to come over and feel them. <laughs> Ray was you trying. Devil to. you! Are you getting? Yeah, are a, you? Uh, how long have you been taking it? Uh, since last week. Oh, okay. Have you gotten hot flashes yet? No. No, but you will get hot flashes from it if it's a hormone. No, I don't. I don't know. It starts with a P. It's pro pro fac or something like that. Pro a little blue pill. Little blue oh pill. no, that no, that's the one that gives you heart on. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, <laughs> no, it's not that. Oh, okay. I'd know that by now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, my dad started taking that uh, estrogen or whatever it is. Yeah, and, that, and he's like so Pro he's so scar. much not he's so much nicer now. Yeah, and he probably starts cr crying uncontrollably too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he just cries and, uh, and, it's and, not a and complains. It's... You don't love me anymore. You don't love me like you used to. What's the name of the pill? Just... Do you have it? Proscar. Proscar. Oh no, you know what that Pro is? Oh no, no, that's um, uh, Proscar. Is um, it's what um, I'm taking generically uh, as uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, it's I called. What that is. It's called. I, I forgot the name of the the uh, generic term. Finasteride. Uh, finasteride. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, and God, I feel so much closer to you now. Well, like. finasteride shrinks the prostate, but it also has some other side effects. Uh, retrograde ejaculation. That's okay. I like holding on to it. What the hell? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> the sheets stay clean. Instead of, instead of coming in her mouth, they come in mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there goes my monetization for tonight. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you can come and go, and that's not a, you know, restricted. No, word. finasteride doesn't really do that for you. It just makes it a little harder to have an, an ejaculation. Uh, I've been taking it for years, and it shrunk my my uh, my prostate. And I then take also I take something that does kind of do that, which is the Cialis, uh, five, five milligram, uh, five milligram. Uh, every day, which uh, uh, also works like Flomax. And I also take Flomax now as well, so I have a double dose of that. So I'm going like a racehorse. Oh, shit. Uh, Ray, do you have your hand up, or are you yes, just holding Ray. your phone? Do you have... No, no I have... Uh... What? I think he has his hand up. No, 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 no. Oh, no. He was holding his phone. He was trying to do something with his phone. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else? What else is in the news? There was something else in the news. I'm trying to remember what it was now. Uh, anybody see the Kobe Bryant uh, thing? The uh... no. Yeah, we just lost yeah, Ray again. Yeah, so I, I, it's my microphone uh, and camera is not working at the same time. The battery's probably weak. Uh, okay. Okay. So I was just trying to turn. It. Anyway. Uh, um, uh, yeah, I watched it. Boy, he his wife was just. Gorgeous, just wasn't she? Or is oh yeah, still I sat behind her on a plane when he first got in the uh, 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 trouble where he was cheating on on the wife and and had to buy that big diamond, and I was uh, one. I was actually one row in front of her, and uh, he what, wasn't there. Was he that? Was she that gorgeous? Uh, she wasn't bad looking. Uh, well, she looked heavier a, then, she's but. A, uh, she might have had some work done. She's just really gorgeous the, the other day, you know. Yeah. I, I hated lusting after her, considering what just happened to her family, you know. Yeah. Uh, but she, yeah. uh, um, uh, very nice service for the for for them. He apparently was very loved by the people around him, and uh, uh, left a good memory, you know. And and so I uh, I, I laud him for that. And uh, looked like he loved his daughter terrifically. I mean, she said something so poignant that I almost just cried from hearing it when she said, well, you know, they're where they should be with each other. Wow. You know? And uh, that, 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 that was wonderful. But Yeah. 
He did a lot of stuff for kids. Yeah, uh, like it was the hormone. No, what happened? No, what happened is that he, he after that whole situation, with the rape charge and the wife and the whole thing and buying the big diamond and all that, he kind of changed his ways. He became a much better person. He went all in. Yeah, he went all in, and uh, I think that's a that should be a lesson to Harvey Weinstein. Anyway. Um, but outside of that, there's no other news happening. Well, we have the corona. We can get back to the coronavirus. Uh, you know. Oh, so they're saying fears in Italy, warnings in Berlin, and caution in Israel. Eighty-three isolated in New York. Really? Yeah. Probably all at the Mount Sinai Hospital. <laughs> you know, that's why. That's why I'm worried about having to go back there to have this uh, this uh, this little operation because I'm going back to a hospital. Yeah. And where is that virus going to be lurking about but in that yeah, hospital? Gotta get the hell out of there, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just give me a mask when I walk in. I'll wash my hands. I'll use that stuff. Oh, by the way, you know what I do every time? I, I have this, this thing I do, and I did it yesterday. I got caught at it, actually. Yeah. But, uh, it's a ritual of mine every time I go into a hospital room. And what do you think that ritual is? You walk through the front door backwards? No, no. This is my, for good luck, I steal a pair of gloves. Yeah. A pair oh. of the latex gloves. In you fact, show us your collection? No, well, no, I have some in my pocket that I haven't removed. And yeah. I had some here the other day. You see them? Oh, Those are condoms. They're not gloves. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> I, I always take the gloves with me. I take some gloves with me. And she saw me grabbing them. But, you know, uh -oh. what the hell? I'm, You know. Uh, it looks like uh, Trump is suing the New York Times for libel. Yeah. 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 And your point is? He didn't is, like his op-ed. Uh, does he know he can't? Uh, I, I don't know that. He can't. Can you imagine if Trump ends up owning the New York Times? He, 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 <laughs> <laughs> listen, before this is over, listen, he, he's always suing people or claiming he's going to sue people. And the fact is, he's president of the United States. He cannot sue anybody. I think the story came out in 2016. Doesn't prior. matter. He can only wait till after he's no longer president before he can sue them. Uh, let me see what this says. As he uh, says, see, we'll see what happens. The article is from yeah. NBC. CNBC. Uh, so the suit seeks millions of dollars in damages for what it claims uh, was the Times false claims that Trump campaign had a conspiracy with Russia during the 2016. <laughs> really? Yeah. If, really? If, if Trump That's, owns the New York Times, if he owns the New York Times, they'll have to make, they'll have to, uh, everything will be written like a fifth grader after that. I mean, yeah, well, also, there's one other thing. If he takes over yeah. the New York Times, it'll go bankrupt within a year. I was going to say, yeah. It already bankrupt, or? Huh? I, I thought it was already bankrupt. Who, who, uh, the guy Bezos owns the Washington. I mean, when he went to India and went to the Taj Mahal, he said, don't get too close, it's solvent. Yeah. It was said during the press conference today there'll be more suits to come. Uh, some guy named Max Frankel, uh, uh, Times falsely reported a, a fact is conspiracy with Russia. It uh, doesn't matter. He can't sue them for that, Phil. Yeah. He can't they, they sue them. them. He can't sue them. So Number one of the reporters asked him, are you going to sue if everybody writes an op-ed that you don't agree with? He says, well, you know, it's not an op-ed. It's just... Someone's opinion. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> did, he, did he really Are say that? Such a moron. Did he say that? Pretty much. That hmm. rings true to me. Oh, my God. <laughs> what an idiot. Yeah. He goes, today. I heard him say, I didn't know this, but thousands of people what die from the flu every day. Oh, yeah. He said that. I never knew that. A lot of most people don't know that. Yeah, well, maybe if you had done something else besides chase tail, you know. it all goes away when it gets warmer. Yeah, it all goes away when it gets warmer. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, there is some truth to that. I heard a scientist say because there's less. Uh, no, well, no, no, there. he believes that to be true because every woman he ever came on to went away when he got warmer. <laughs> so uh, that virus. 
they're saying it's a major the virus is a major health threat in Orange County yeah. and uh, even state owned facility in Contra Costa Mesa. Pasta. Yeah, that's uh, not true. I'm sure well, it'll it, hit. It, it, listen, there's I'm, five I'm, people, and that's it. And by uh, next week, there's, there's yeah. in Northern California. And you know why it's not going to happen in this country, Phil? Because we have the best medical system in the world. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. Well, why is it happening in these other countries that have socialized medicine? Because they're shithole countries. That's right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, here comes uh, here comes Bree. I've got to put him in. Oh Bree. God, we got to go to the eight thing. Yeah, there we go. You didn't save my space. Hmm? I am I am hurt in the. Family. Well, I didn't save your space because time has passed since you called us last. Duda, Duda, I'm a poet. Oh, I don't know it. <laughs> We're thrown to the wolves. What poet? Hmm? He threw. He threw you to the. He threw you under the bus. Yeah. Yeah. Took your face. So who? Uh, 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 Charlie. Charlie. Let me ask Charlie this. Charlie. Uh, so now uh, uh, the dust hasn't cleared much. We still have all these candidates, right, running. Yeah. Uh, but uh, who is your current choice? In other words, who who are you rooting for? Bernie Sanders. I already voted for him. Uh, me too. Is, is, yeah, still yeah. going for Bernie, huh? Yep. Yeah. Not giving up on that war horse. You're not giving up on yeah. Howard Beale, are you? No, I just went to his rally last week. Really? It was great. Fighting Andrew Yang. Yeah. How many people were there? Do you have any idea? No, probably how... 40,000. Really? In Austin, yeah. Anybody outside or uh, like the. We're outside, yeah. Yeah. Tip to be square. Wow. That's uh, that's good. Well, Howard Beale may will run for president after all, you know. Yeah, I, I read Mr. Something. Wilson. We're mad uh, as hell. Not gonna take it anymore. Right. <laughs> the Dems are saying that he could win the White House. Uh, is, so the consensus is starting to swing around to Bernie as being a viable candidate. <clears throat> well, what if Trump says, "I'm not going to vacate the White House because there are improprieties," and I'm not going to turn over the United States to socialism. The so military. until these irregular, I'm filing lawsuits. And this is a guy. This is a guy, this is a guy who just a, 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 in what India. Is, in <laughs> India, just said that what the United States eventually will have <clears throat> is a li president for life. Yeah, because he wants to be it. Yeah. <clears throat> and imagine <clears throat> if Republicans win back the House in yeah. that election. If we keep yeah. electing octogenarians, they'll never be there for life, you know, or they will. Be. <laughs> yeah, they will be there for life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, hey, Pete. What I was going to say is if Biden, if, uh, if uh, um, Bernie uh, runs and wins, uh, the night he wins, he's probably going to have a stroke and die. <laughs> because you know, what do you think? He will be more shocked than any of us. Who do you think he's going to yeah, pick? He vice won't be president? shocked. Who yeah, do you think you he's going to pick for pick vice Biden? president? Well, here's the deal. Warren. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think he can win with two socialists on the uh, ticket. Well, like well, he's going to vote. He's going. I think he's vice president. Uh, so he's going to have Sybil the soothsayer. <clears throat> Michelle Obama. You really have to go back now to network to get that joke. Yeah, I, I don't, <laughs> did you get it? Did you get it, and, Jeff? Well, the thing. Yeah. Sybil yeah. the soothsayer would be his running mate. Yeah. Didn't go. For I me. bet he picks uh, Stacey Abrams. Oh, from uh, Georgia. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. From Georgia, yeah. I think he does. Boy, that's a winning she's, ticket. How she's definitely in there. His top five. I can guarantee he's in top five. What would it take to get you over to our side, Phil? How much money? <laughs> uh, can Bloomberg 50 buy cents. you? Huh? <laughs> what? 50 cents? <laughs> okay, I'll give you 50 cents if you vote for whoever the Democrat is. Hey, I could do that in this state and it wouldn't make any difference. No, I could I could vote for a Republican in this state and it wouldn't make any difference. All right. Yeah. Uh, so. so have you noticed, have you guys getting all the Bloomberg uh, advertisements where that yeah, one where I, every I, sink... I, Every single one of them. Are you done? I, 
going to I'm going to sign Phil, up. For the Phil, will you let match? Kevin? Will you let Kevin finish what he was saying? Oh. Every single one of the people in the in the in the advertisement is a woman. Oh yeah. Did you notice that? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's right yeah, after it's all the, in, the yeah, NDAs that. were released, every single person in the one is a woman. Really? And they're all and, talking about how Bloomberg is so good. Yeah. Every you know, single you, person in you know it. He, I, did, I, I, didn't, I didn't see them, and then we'll go to Patrick. I didn't see yeah. them, but supposedly there are ads running. The Bloomberg, he's right on top of everything about the coronavirus. It's Trump's it's, fault right now. Yes, uh, yes, Patrick. Yeah, I, you asked Phil what it would take for him to come to your side. Mm -hmm. um, I was just thinking for me, all you didn't have to do is have. Uh, uh, have what? Oh, uh, Tulsi, yeah. Tulsi. Yeah. Uh, I'm you, still holding on for her, man. Oh, yeah. I, I, I mean, if she's the nominee, I'm voting for her. I'm voting for her. For Tulsi. What, what do you call that little gray thing she does to her hair? Here we go. I don't know, but I love everything about Who it. Who cares? Except, <laughs> is that, oh, did I you get that in the mail? Did you get that in the mail, uh, Kevin? Look yeah, at it, this thing. It's oh, yeah. I got one of those. It folds out. Yeah. It's got this... I, God, he's sp he's spending the money like crazy because that yeah, kind of and, thing. And they're well, all women. He said he I, bought I made, one Democrat. I made a negative remark about that? on uh, on on a uh, Facebook thing, yeah. and I started getting all sorts of ads from him that I could just uh, 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 join Bloomberg and I get a free pack of Trump matches. Uh, I could get uh, a headscarf that you know. Uh, anti-Trump headscarf <clears throat> and a bunch of stuff like that. I'm thinking about signing up for it because I want them. <laughs> yes, uh, Patrick. I would assume most of you guys are getting text messages from various candidates. Mm -hmm. Your phone. Is that? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I get them, of course, from Trump people, and I, you know, they're looking for donations and that. So the only single Republican woman that I could think of that I could deal with is Laura Ingraham. So what I've done is I respond to all of the text messages and say, if you get me a date with her. <laughs> I, you know what's way, even worse? Wait a minute. Is this, if, all, is if, this all Mike stuff you get? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, get a nope. ton of it in Texas. God, I feel I feel kind of like lo left out here. I haven't gotten Every anything. One of those were me. Mike. I wow. donated a couple of times to the Trump campaign, and not a lot of money. You know, twenty five dollars here and hundred dollars, and and they are relentless. Uh, you know, they keep coming back to the well instead of trying to find some new people. You know, I gave what I decided I wanted to give. And, and I'm done. And uh, but they keep coming back for more. You know, they want more, more, more. I'm not, my name's yeah. not on the wall. I, I'm not certified Trump anymore. You know, all sorts of things uh, because I, I haven't given more money. Yes, Bree. I'd be happy for it to be Bernie Sanders. But I I honestly deep down feel that it, it, it has to be Bloomberg. Because I, I just think that he, <clears throat> if you put Sanders in there, you're going to have gridlock like you've never seen before. I mean, it's going to be unbelievable gridlock. You put in Bloomberg, he can buy people out. If he, you know, he has an idea, he can buy them out. He said in the debate, he said, I bought 21 Democrats. I bought them. Well, he, he bought them their check seats. The, he the bought record. them their seats. Well, he, he stopped he... himself. He said, "Dem." He goes, "I bought," and then he stopped, and then he and then he changed it because he I knew he was about to say. Yeah. He said, "Got" instead what? of "bought." Yeah, he was but, about to say "bought." <laughs> but seriously, Bloomberg yeah. can can get things done because the way our system is now, mm -hmm. it's based on money. Now, I agree. I, I, all the people out there that say we got to get money out of politics, I agree. That's not happening this year, so let's let's not, not you know, this look at year. that. No, uh, uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, Patrick. I had heard someone. I don't remember where I heard it, but that if Bloomberg were to just give each of the candidates 
candidate $10 million to get out of the race. <laughs> he, could, he would save so much money, and then he could just, I mean, because he's paying it anyway, so pay them. And, it, and whoever said it uh, wasn't certain that it's not, it not legal. You know, it, it seemed to be a legal thing where you could donate to their, you know, just buy them off. Go, yeah, he go did. Talk. You, you didn't hear about that, but he did. Andrew Yang on CNN <coughs> told the panel that Mike Bloomberg called up the donors and said, you guys don't have to give any money this round. I've got it covered. And Bloomberg yeah. paid the money. By Whoa. the way, by the way, by the way, if uh, <coughs> if he gave out $10,000 to everybody to get out of the race, uh, do you know how many people uh, uh, Elizabeth Warren would have to have sex with as a prostitute to get that kind of money? At least 10,000 of them. Yeah, it would take the rest of her life. <laughs> Tell us in one week. Yes, Trump, yes, Jeff, what? I think Trump would take the money. <laughs> yeah, Trump, Trump would take the money. Oh, boy. <laughs> Do you know we almost have 40 people listening to us right now on the I, th on I think Bloomberg could give two billion dollars to Donald and say, here, I'll make you a real billionaire. You get out. <laughs> Donald will take it. <laughs> Just go away. Yeah. Yeah. I I bet he would. I bet he would. <laughs> and the promise never to talk behind his back again. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Let me see here. How much time do we That's have? Awesome. Let me see here. Where are we? Elizabeth Warren did become a hooker, and she made $27.10. So they asked her, who gave you the $0.10? Cents? She said, everybody gave me $0.10. Cents. <laughs> That's right. Gee, now you're just stealing jokes. You were seven years old when you heard that joke. It, it I was, heard Henny Youngman say that in 1986. It, it, was, it, it, it was the public domain. <laughs> yeah, well, Henny Youngman was famous for saying, take my candidate, please. <laughs> <laughs> I stole it from Bell Parth. Yeah. Oh. So how sexist has this show come tonight? We've made jokes about Elizabeth Warren <laughs> hooking. And uh, we've made jokes about uh, Tulsi Gabbard, how you'd, if she just put out for you, you'd vote for her, Patrick. <laughs> Uh, and uh, boy, you, your vote can be bought, can't it? If she brushed up against his wheelchair, he'd vote for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she gave me the coronavirus. I. <laughs> <laughs> she could take you on the subway on her knee. Would you vote for her? Yeah, yeah. I, I I got sick a couple of weeks ago, and I grew up. My mustache got fatter and bigger. I got the Kelowna virus. Now there's a joke nobody will get. <laughs> There's a joke nobody will get. Yeah. He's a comedian. Yeah, he was a comedian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right over the head, right? Uh, yes, uh, Bree. Did you get it, Bree? Did you get it? No. no. Okay. There was a comedian. There was a comedian. His name was Jerry Colonna. And, Colon. Colonna. And he was called uh, Jerry Colonna. Yeah. But there's one way to solve the coronavirus. Put a lime in your ear. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be here all week. I told you. The, uh, what? Car carpet fibers will be. Carpet fibers, yeah. Okay, hey, listen, that's it. That's our theme playing. That means it's all over with and I can go to sleep. Oh, no, I have to stick around for an hour to post uh, 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 the next show, which is coming up with uh, 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 Jack Bishop called The Intersection, which yeah, I hope some of you will call. Yeah, stay tuned for Patrick. Anyway. Alex, uh, I want to see a thermometer behind you with all the money you make from YouTube. Uh, so far, it's $5.01. And Start coloring it in like it, you do for, you know. Yeah, Wizard right, on. right. Anyway, everybody, yeah, that's it for tonight. Why don't you give a big wave goodbye, and I will give a big wave goodbye back. Okay, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. There goes our citizen panel, each and every one of them. And uh, the next show coming up, of course, is The Intersection with Jack Bishop. Uh, he'll be here to take your calls, just as I've been here to take your calls. And uh, thanks to all the people who have been listening to the program tonight. We've actually had a, uh, a massive amount of people watching. 
and we it's growing oddly enough i think probably this show is finally growing the worse it gets anyway i'm alex bennett that's it for tonight i'll see you again tomorrow night uh 10 o'clock eastern daylight uh, eastern standard time same time same station in life and in the meantime if you see her be sure to tell her i love her okay bye-bye everybody mm-hmm.